Hi everyone, got on the side. Welcome back again on this channel. As I said in my last video that we will be covering relevance AI and NA10. So this is going to be the second video of this complete series where we are going to learn how we can build AI agents using platform like relevance AI. Now why relevance? So the first thing is that relevance AI is pretty easy to understand and it has a very easy interface. The second major important thing is that relevance AI is something which is where we can build research based agent and that is my favorite one. Now what relevance has extra is that it provides the different functionalities in terms of building data operation AI agent. So what does it mean? So we can build AI agents on relevance that where we can control the data in different formats and we can do a lot of operation on data while passing through the agent. Now, if you don't know about me, my name is Gaurav Mitawa. I am building AI agents for the last one year and I have sold multiple AI agents to different companies around the world. Now, let's start this video. I'm pretty excited about it and let's understand how we can build on relevance AI. So relevance AI has two major things. The one is AI agents and another is tools. So you can build AI agents also, but you can also build tools. Now, what you can do with tools? So you can build automations and you can build tools and then you can use them as different type of automation for a particular work or for a particular task. So earlier we were using uh, make.com, but now it becomes easy to build on relevance using their different tools. So you can just use tools and you can build automations on relevance without using agent infrastructure. Now in agents, there are three major things that we need to learn. So these are called as prompts. We can define them as prompts. Now, when we are defining prompts in relevance AI and for AI agents, we need to follow a particular protocol. And that is, we need to define its role first. So how do we do that? So I am here in an AI agent and I am in their build part. So you can run agent here, you can build agent here. Now we need to follow the protocol. The protocol says that the first part should be a role. So we need to define what role the AI agent needs to perform. Second is the context as the agent needs to have understanding what task it is going to perform. What is the context? So you need to provide a slightly uh, more knowledge about context. Then you can define SOP or you can define task directly. So what is SOP standard Pro operating procedure? So SOP is something where agent needs we can understand what is the starting point and what is the end point. So let's say if you give uh, some input to the agent. Now agent understand that this is the starting point and using that input data, it needs to perform different actions and this is going to be the end section. So here, if you could just see that the, you, this agent will be asking you a URL. Using the URL, it will perform the processor and then it will take the URL use the tool and will give you the output. So this is how their agent actually works. Now there comes the tools and variable parts. So tools are very essential part of you know, building AI agents. Whenever we build any tool, we need to understand how the tool is actually working. What are the multiple layer or steps in the tools and what, how we can put input. So anytime when you build tools on relevance AI, you need to understand a few things. So let's say I'm in the tool section. So first part is that you can build agent. That's that's how I showed you how you can build, how you can follow the protocols. And in that SOP, you can define a tool. Now I'm in the tool right now. So this is a new tool that I have just built. So what is the main thing? So anytime when you build a tool, you need to define the title of the tool because the agent will take the title first, will understand what does it mean? And accordingly, it will choose the tools to perform the action. So always remember that you need to define the title of the tool and you need to define a description for the tools. So this tool scraps news from given websites and send email to Gaurav. Now, Agent as agent will use the tool, it will first read its title and description and later on it will follow the standard operating procedure. So you need to define the title and uh, description. Now, as we come to the tool section, we need to understand a few things. The first thing is the tool and type description and title. The second is the input data. 
so this is how the input actually look like so you can use a multiple format of inputs it could be text it could be numbers json file or different files or audio videos anything there are multiple formats that you can use so as you provide input to the agent the agent will use that input and will put it here and then will process the tool will run the tool and you will the input will pass through different tabs and then it will provide us the output eventually so that's how the agent perform the task it takes you the it takes input from you and then using the tool it will provide the input to the tool according to its knowledge its understanding and it, its intelligence and then it will finally get the output and he can use the output for input for a next tool as well now there comes the integration so here if you could just see i provided input in the code part i didn't provide input directly into the input section because my input was very fixed so what i did is i provided input my in my codes and later on it extracted the news from using this module called extract website content then this content was filtered using the code again and then it was sent to the my email so this is called as integration that what type of integration i have done in the tool so you can do the integration in the tool itself now comes the knowledge base so how the knowledge base works so knowledge base in relevancy is slightly different in anytime we don't get knowledge base so we need to use a uh, actual databases like sql or vector databases but here in relevancy ai we get the option for the knowledge base they have integrated their own knowledge base which we can use with agent it works as a database for the agent and there we can organize the data so the knowledge base that in relevancy ai is slightly organized it is in the tabular format so because we are uh, dealing with a lot of data operations so the data is organized here now the knowledge base that is in relevancy ai works on vector search or we can call it on semantic meaning actually what is that what is the difference between rag and vector search so rag is a kind of algorithms where it finds out that similar word of your query so let's say you ask who is founder of open ai now it will search the word founder open ai in the not talking about rag system so and it will find out all the similar words that are matching to those words and will give it to the llm now llm will understand the query and it will understand the all the similar meaning similar words that are taken by rag and then it will give you the response but in vector search it is slightly different how because vector search has ai inbuilt into it so what it does is that it will understand the semantic meaning of the query it will understand who is the founder actually so it will search only the founder of open ai in the knowledge base it will it won't take most much of the data but it will take the data that is only relevant and according matching the semantic meaning of the query and then it will come up with the response now later the llm can be used to refine the response now let's go to a tool and let's understand how we can build a tool so i have built a tool that sends me daily updates about ai news on my mails how does it work so as i am here on my new scraper i have written a code and in that code i have given its multiple websites that find out news on those website and then later on it gives the data into this variable format so how this data pass on in this different step is that any time when you are performing a particular step on the node it will pass the data into a variable format to another node now you can use the variable and define this variable here again into the next node and then it you can run the node in loop loop format and as you see here that i have defined this variable if you could just see right there and then this node is performing the task later on this data pass through different variables again the data is gets filtered here and then it's the data gets passed through the llm so what llm do here so llm is something which takes the input through coming through different variables and then according to its understanding and instruction it will organize the data or filter the data now here i am getting my final output and here i have used my mail to integrate it with my email systems and then it will send me emails on my my personal email 
So let's see how this tool actually works. So I'm running the tool and this is going to run and find out the top new AI news that are relevant for me according to my requirement because I have mentioned everything on the code and it will send me all these news to my mail. Now I am as I come here this tool is running and it will let's see how this works. So here I can see that this tool is successfully executed. Now as I come to my email system I can just see that I got an email and that is from my own email to on my own email. Now I can see that just zero minutes ago, this is the new that it has scrapped. So the this is the new news that AI job prediction become corporate America's most competitive support. And now I can read the news here. So this is how it sends me news and it sends me the email of that news also. So it will send me news on daily basis in the morning. It has sent me multiple news if you could just see here. So every morning at 8 o'clock, it sends me a mail there. It sends me lot of news that are relevant to me and using that news, I can update myself about AI and AI agents. Now, how this A tool sends me news at 8 a.m. because I haven't scheduled it. Now, let's see how actually it works. So right now I am here and as I come to the workforce part, you will see a workforce section. Now, this is a slightly different. So what you can do is that you can use Relevance AI as an automation platform. So as you come to the workforce, workforce is designed to trigger the agent and different tools to run like them as automations. Now, what are the triggers I'm talking about? So as you come here, you will see four major options. The one is conditions. You can put condition. You can use triggers to run at a particular time to run the agent. So let's say you get a mail. And now you can use that mail as a trigger point to run the agent mm -hmm. and to respond the mail directly. So as you come here, let's say if I'm putting the trigger here, now I see a lot of options here. The Microsoft Outlook, Google Mail, Google Calendar. It could be like if someone is sending you mail, then the agent will send the email back to the person according to the understanding of email. If someone has scheduled the meeting, the inbound agent can uh, research about prospect and get you the details that this is pers this person has scheduled meeting with you. This could be his requirement. This is about his company, etc. Now they could you could use webhook as an input as a trigger point, and you can use scheduling time as a trigger point, which I have used here. If you could just see, so I have scheduled this tool at morning 8 a.m. and this tool provides us hot news about AI early in the morning when I wake up. So on the second side, I have uh, scheduled different tools that uh, send email to my prospects on daily basis. And this is a tool that I have used. So it's not just about the tools, but you can use trigger points for the agents as well. So you can define the agents and then you can use these agents. You can use the triggers to trigger the agents. Now, the fourth major thing is condition. So what does it mean by condition? So let's say if you're building an agent and you get two outputs in one time or you can get two inputs at one time. Now, let's say if the one input is zero, it doesn't have any value and another input is something. So you can use condition according to the triggers you get or you can define these conditions to perform to follow a particular path according to the condition met. So it becomes easy to build automation using that workforce part. Now let's see how their agent actually look like. So as we come to AI agent, you could see the role part, you could see the different tools. Now let's see how their tools are actually built. So this is a tool that I have just seen and we are seeing that there are API. So their tools are mostly built using different APIs or custom codes. Now, whatever you see here, so this is the node you see export data to temporary downloadable file. This is a node that is built using code and it has saved as a pre-built functions that you can use in tools. Now you can get always get a code part and you can use low code systems. If you don't know even about coding, you can just use chat GPT. Even I use chat GPT to write codes and you can prompt the chat GPT that this is the input that you have and this is the output you want and it will write you the code in Python that you can use in between of that. So you can write JavaScript. If you are familiar with JavaScript, you can use JavaScript. If you are familiar with Python, then you can use Python. And then you can 
pass the data through the variables remember variables are the key component in these tools if you manage to build a tool but you didn't define the variables properly the tool won't work and you will get a lot of debugs so major important thing to learn about a tool is that you can use multiple apis in tools to perform the action or to gather data and to perform the actions and you can use multiple integrations like it could be your email calendly juhu or crm and then you can use in the tools and the agent will use in those tools to perform the actions so this is how their tools actually works and as you see the knowledge you can define the knowledge you can upload the files that will be accessible directly to the agent or you can directly upload into their knowledge based data set part and it will be accessible to the agent also you can run triggers point here so triggers are as i explained that anytime when you get input the agent will get triggers using that input and then it will perform the actions so that's how relevance ai actually works now in the second video the third video we will be covering about we will be building an actual agent so that's all for today i will see you in the next video if you have any question about relevance ai and you want to learn anything you want to build any agent you can comment it down and i will build in the next video so thank you so much for watching me if you can hit the like so i will see you in the next video